Hi, I'm here at Clifton Springs on the Northern Bellarine to show you how to do a beachcomb. We all like to visit the beach to surf, snorkel, swim, walk, play, or just relax. But another thing that you can do is a beachcomb. The best place to do a beachcomb is within the intertidal zone. This starts from low tide all the way up to high tide and is full of a diverse array of plants and animals. These animals are highly adapted to their environment, being constantly bombarded with wind, salt spray, waves and sunshine. Before we start, there are two venomous animals that we need to look out for. The first is the blue ring octopus, and they can sometimes look like white blobs as their camouflage. The other one is the cone snail. The best way to avoid touching these animals is to always make sure you can see your hands. If you really want to avoid them, try doing a beach comb with your eyes and not your hands. So today I'm going to show you four different types of animals and tell you a little bit about their lives. So let's go. So I'm looking for different things in the intertidal zone from shells or different other artifacts. They can sometimes be small, so just keep an eye out. You might also see that I'm wearing protective footwear and I'm doing so to keep my feet safe from sharp objects. <gasps> Here we go. This is something very interesting. This artifact is from an animal called a mollusk. It's actually within a subgroup called cephalopods and cephalopods include squid, cuttlefish, octopuses and nautilus. It's very rare to find cephalopods on the intertidal zone alive, but it's more common to find a cuttlefish bone, which is what this is. So cuttlefish look like squid, but they have a hard internal shell that helps them float. When they're complete, they look like a surfboard and they can actually tell you how large the animal was when it was alive. What I love about beachcombing is that I never know what I'm going to find. So every time it's a special adventure. Ooh. Here's something interesting. This is another type of mollusk called a gastropod. Gastropods are commonly known as slugs or snails and look very similar to the ones on land, having a single shell like this. You can find gastropods either as empty shells like this one or living attached to rocks or seaweed. This particular gastropod is called a moon snail. It's very common to find moon snails shells on the beach, but you can also find their egg masses. These masses are clear, horseshoe-shaped, jelly-like masses that are often confused with jellyfish. Another really special thing about gastropods is that they can sometimes be predators. Gastropods, like the moon snail, have a specialised tongue called a radula, which is a conveyor belt with spikes on it. When they find their prey, such as this one here, they attach themselves to the top and they use their radula to drill a hole into the shell and eat the flesh inside. If you ever find a shell with a perfectly spherical hole like this one, you know that it has been predated on by something like a moon snail. So, let's see what else we can find. This is a good one to find. This is also a mollusk, but it's called a bivalve. They're named that way because they generally have two shells with a hinge at the bottom that open and close like this. Bivalves are not predators like gastropods, but instead are filter feeders, using gill-like appendages that come from the top here to find little bits of prey through the water. They're very important in bay environments like Port Phillip Bay as they help clean the water. Now I'm going to go near the water to look at the lower part of the intertidal zone and see what we have here. Ooh, wow, this is a great find. So this is actually a shark egg. Sharks can lay eggs like this or they can lay live young. This one is from the Port Jackson shark. Adults can reach up to 1.65 metres and predate upon things like crustaceans and mollusks using plate-like teeth to crush them. It takes eight to 10 years for the adults to reach maturity where they lay eight pairs of eggs per year. What's really special about this is its unique design. So firstly, it's highly camouflaged to blend in with the natural environment and look just like seaweed. Another thing is this screw shape. 
So this is really cool because the mum will actually grab the egg in her mouth and screw it into a rock crevice to stop it washing away with tides. And that's what gives it the spiral shape. So there you go. We found evidence of amazing and beautiful marine animals, including cephalopods, gastropods, bivalves, and shark eggs. If you would like to see these artifacts well into the future, here are some simple steps that we can all follow. First, leave only your footprints. Even though these artifacts are beautiful, they need to remain in the living, working, intertidal zone. Another simple step that you can take is to take your rubbish home with you or pick up litter if safe to do so. By reducing the amount of litter, we may reduce the chances of animals ingesting this litter or becoming entangled by it. Most importantly, take your friends and family out with you on your next beachcomb and share what you learnt today with them. We hope that you can find all the animals that we did today on your next beachcomb and start your journey to becoming an intertidal zone expert.